I think we have a few questions now. Um, Megan, sh uh, should I? Uh, there's a, well, I can read it. Um, the first question we have up here at the top is from Curtis. How would you measure success in fighting climate change? What sectors are most important for leading the charge? Wow. <laughs> That's a hard question. I don't, I don't know how you, well, I mean, we would measure success in terms of uh, reducing the impacts um, over time. And of course, that's a, that's a long-term um, a, a long project uh, in terms of redu reducing our, our CO2 emissions. The impact of those reductions are, are, will be far in the future. Um, but I mean, that, that's, you know, I think, you know, the, the, um, the climate um, climate reality Canada has something that they call the the National Climate League, which is sort of a report card for municipalities, where they uh, identify a whole series of um, best practices for municipalities, and it's it, it they sort of rate different municipalities against each other in terms of of their progress. That's a starting point, but I mean that really doesn't get that that starts us down the road but I, I guess the true measure of success is are we actually bringing our co2 or our global greenhouse gas emissions down um and in terms of what sectors are most part important for leading the charge i would say uh government um industry and also international organizations such as the un because quite frankly what we need is systemic change. Uh, we can all do what we want. I mean, we can we can um, do all the right things, but a whole bunch of individuals doing the right things are, are not gonna tackle the problem. We have to really systemically reorganize the way we, we do some things. Uh, Pablo, what do, you, uh, do you have anything to add? Uh, I would say, yeah, the same. Uh from like the last uh, UN uh, report about uh, emissions and how uh, uh, if we don't stop emissions, the impacts of climate change over time are going to be stronger and harder. So I would say the measure, the, st the starting point that we have been talking since Rio de Janeiro in, back in 1991, it's reducing emissions. And that's probably where the global action should be focused uh, now it's in reducing emissions in many ways. Uh, and then also then the impact of climate change should be uh, seen as a local, more at the local level, either country, provincial or, or municipal, depending on the, the regions. Here in Saskatchewan, I would say, uh, from the perspective of impacts of climate change might be agriculture sector uh, as one of the most, uh, the, having the most impacts here. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, I think in Saskatchewan, the agriculture sector has a, a lot to contribute to, to the reduction. So. Reductions and also adaptation to climate change because change, uh, climate is changing, is already changing, and we have to adapt to that, but emissions as well. Yeah, that's a good point. <clears throat> Another question. Where can one find summaries of the evidence for climate change reality to go to? Uh, well, I'd say go to some of the resources that I listed, uh, and then certainly the the um, intergovernmental plan, uh, panel on on climate change, um, uh, which is the the UN uh, directed body. But certainly those 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 uh, organizations that I listed, including the Saskatchewan Environmental Society, the um, the Prairie Climate Center. Uh, and also uh, uh, Climate Reality Canada would point you in the right direction. So we can include links to those once the video's up on the YouTube page and your presentation will be there with the slide, yeah. but we can also put them in the, in the body of the, so that it's easy to just click through. Yeah. Perfect. And all of the, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, there's also all the organizations that Pablo mentioned uh, uh, may have resources also. 
Yeah, uh, I would recommend for the local level, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. They work on climate change and they have a lot of information for up the local level. Uh, um, yeah, and there's Canada has a lot of information, uh, scientific studies and, and uh, reports that are coming up like every year in, in, in many, at many uh, levels, federal, provincial and municipal levels. But yeah, the Canadian and uh, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities have a lot of resources for that. Um, next question. I was wondering if there are any groups focusing on environmentalism in the agriculture industry, or if there is any specific focus among these groups. I'm taking my first year at the College of Agriculture and Bioscience at the U of S, and this is something that interests me. Um, a, a really good starting point, uh, not to say that this is the only group working on this, but is the National Farmers Union. Um, uh, they're doing some interesting work on climate change and, and actually produced a uh, quite a interesting, although in some circles controversial, uh, report called Tackling the Farm Crisis and the Climate Crisis. And it's available on the National Farmers Union uh, website. Uh, nationally, there are other groups, uh, and I know that the NFU is working with those groups. So if you, if you talk to the climate change coordinator at the NFU, uh, his name is Darren Qualman, he'd be able to link you up with these with the other groups uh, Canada wide that are that are doing a, doing work around the agriculture piece. Uh, there's also um, um, some of the research farms uh, in, in Saskatchewan are also uh, doing uh, work on the on on um, the uh, the climate implications of agriculture. Uh, but I, I think probably the, the NFU is a good place to start. And uh, for somebody who's interested in agriculture and, and climate change, I would also suggest that you look at the SES website. We have a number of case studies uh, of people who are reducing their, their um, greenhouse gas emissions uh, under a project that we call the, uh, the low um, carbon pro <laughs> Oh, I can't even remember, low carbon stories of Saskatchewan project. Yeah. <laughs> and there's two stories there of farmers uh, and what they're doing in terms of uh, reducing their, the, their emissions on their farms. Mm -hmm. And uh, last question. What are local options for use of alternatives like solar and wind for electricity generation? That's a good question. Do you want to go or should I? Uh, I can talk a little bit about it. <laughs> yes. Uh, just like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Saskatchewan has the highest potential for uh, solar electricity generation in the country. And there is a, a there's action already. There, there are some, uh, some work it's been uh, done has been done and it's still implementing and there's a high potential there also for wind uh, so definitely uh, I would say from the, uh, and the one of the main things regarding um, uh, renewable energy and the solar particularly is that the prices or the cost of generating has decreased enormously in the last five to ten years so the technology is already there and it's uh, the uh, the prices or the cost of producing is it's competitive with any other source. So uh, those, particularly solar, is, is important in the province. You're on mute, Margaret. <laughs> mm -hmm. It depends on where you are in Saskatoon, because I'm assuming most people uh, in this audience are, are Saskatoon based. But I know that the city of Saskatoon is looking seriously at a um, uh, at a program whereby people can finance um, uh, energy retrofits and renewables on their utility bill. Um, now, but this depends on where you are in Saskatoon because some people in Saskatoon are on Saskatoon Light and Power and others are on SAS, uh, SAS Power. And unfortunately the provincial incentives have, have uh, at least for the time being kind of disappeared. But uh, I would suggest keeping an eye on, on the city of Saskatoon for their PACE financing uh, 
program because that might be a very convenient way for people to, to be able to do some of these things um, even if they, they wouldn't normally be able to finance them because it, it basically gets, it's put on as an addition onto your, your utility bill. So that's yes. something that you should keep an eye out on. And also for those of you who are interested in, in solar, but aren't in a situation where you could actually do, put up your own panels, the, there's the SES Solar Co-op where you can buy shares for larger installations. So you're supporting solar, even if you can't do it yourself. Uh, so that's another group to look into. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like no more questions. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Wonderful. Yeah, Wonderful thanks for presentation. presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good evening, everyone. Stay warm.